They have no idea about guns. They, they, they have no clue how a gun works. They have no interest in, in, in learning it. So they come up with these really, really stupid laws without really knowing what they're passing. The problem with that is that it creates all kinds of loopholes for us. And being the uh, very resourceful people that we are, we're very good at finding loopholes and working around them. So that's kind of where we're at. So it's, it's a mixed bag. But I will tell you, here's kind of the, the general feeling in Sacramento. Um, there's a lot of very moderate Democrats that are on our side, OK? Um, please understand that in terms of CRPA, we are a single issue organization. In other words, we are a Second Amendment, pro Second Amendment organization, and that's it. We don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. We don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, green, orange, purple. It doesn't matter. We don't care if you're gay, straight. It doesn't matter. If you're pro 2A, we want to work with you. We'll do whatever we can to make sure that that right is extended to everybody and preserved. Not only preserved, but expanded. Because in this environment that we're now in, since Howard McDonald, there's a really good chance that we'll be able to get back some of the gun rights that we've lost over the years as well. So that's kind of what the, the goal that we're working to. But the Democrats pretty much uh, um, got their butt kicked last year. Not a single anti-gun bill passed the legislature in the last legislative session. And the Democrats are not happy about that. So they're pretty much like a bunch of wounded animals right now in Sacramento. And they're throwing out everything they possibly can to make it a little stick. And uh, right now, the best chance they have is 8144. Um, there was a whole bunch of other things that they tried to get through that either went into the suspense file because there's most no money for it, or it just got shot down altogether because even they figured out it was completely ridiculous. So I'm going to go through some of the highlights that are of interest to this group. And this is the latest information as of yesterday. So unless something changed today, which it better not have, because I told our lobbyists to get a hold of me today if something did. So um, AB 144, we just went over. Um, AB 613 is a handgun and ammo registration bill repeal. And what this is, is AB 962, the ammo bill that was um, uh, shot down in the courts in Fresno a couple months ago, that law is technically still on the books. So this law would basically repeal it altogether and just get rid of it. Um, that bill is dead. That's not going to happen. But it really doesn't matter because AB 962 is not going anywhere anyway. But it would have been nice to at least you know, get it off the books altogether and let, let the Democrats know they don't even try this again. But. To get to AB 962, the uh, ammo, ammo bill, where you couldn't uh, mail order ammo anymore, you had to leave a fingerprint, your address, and everything every time you buy ammo. Yeah. So, but that, that's, it, it didn't go through, so you're fine. <laughs> um, AB 809, this is uh, by Assemblyman Mike Fuhrer from LA. Everybody knows Mike Fuhrer, rapid anti gunner. Um, He's just, he's a, he's a crazy guy. He's extremely intelligent, but he knows nothing about guns except he doesn't like them. Um, and that's the uh, rifle and shotgun registration bill. And basically what this bill would have, would have, done, would have imposed the same gross requirements on a, on a shotgun and a rifle that you have on a handgun. So it would be de facto registration of long guns as well. Um, that went into the suspense file, and the suspense file is basically where the assembly or the Senate says, you know what, we just don't have the money for this right now, we can't do this right now, it needs some more work. It goes, it's like it's in limbo. It doesn't, it's not going to go any further, it's done. When something goes into the suspense file, it very rarely comes back out, it very rarely gets resurrected, so that's a good thing. Yes. Sounds like we got Mike Fuhrer right here in this, uh, over here by this table, actually. Um, the other thing is the handgun ammunition. This is from Senator DeLeon, who was the author of AB 962 last time around. And uh, Senator DeLeon is not real happy with us, so he's trying this again. Um, and basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to expand the meaning of handgun ammunition to include rifle ammunition as well. So um, there's all kinds of problems with, with, this, with this law. It's actually worse than AB 962. So why he would think that the courts would let this one through and not AB 962 is beyond us, but um, it, it's, it's fun to, to see his frustration. So it's definitely worth the price of uh, admission for that entertainment alone. Um, here again, this one went to the press file as well. So this is 
in limbo as well, and uh, we're hoping it doesn't come back out. It probably won't because it's just got all kinds of issues. Um, and the other one is, this is actually, uh, we supported this bill. This is, this is one that's good for our side. And this was brought by uh, Senator Doug Lamont. He's up in Northern California, a very rural area. He's extremely pro-gun. He's a really, really good guy and absolutely solid on our issue. Um, AB 269. And basically what this would do is um, the uh, DROS fund, the money that you all pay when you go to buy a handgun or a long gun for that matter, there's actually about a $17 million surplus in the DROS fund right now. The Department of Justice would like to use that money for other purposes. Don't know what those purposes are, but the problem is that when the DROS law came into effect, it was strictly written so that it wasn't a tax. In other words, that money had to be used simply for the processing fee that it took to do the background check and all other kind of stuff. You can't use it for anything else. This law audits that fund because if that's the case, there should only be, the, the price of a drove should only cover the administrative cost. There should not be a surplus in there at all. It should be break even all the way across. So basically this law says, okay, DOJ, we want to know why you have all this money in there and are you charging too much? And if you are, you either need to lower the drove fee altogether or give everybody a refund. So that law is uh, uh, very good and um, it is actually making its way through the Senate. So we'll see where that goes. We're watching that one. Um, this one is actually by a Democratic senator, Senator Lou Correa down in Orange County, and this is the sale of used handguns. Um, one, of the, one of the big things that, that, that we're all been dealing with, and, and it really makes life a lot harder for all of us, is uh, SB 15, the so-called safe handguns, handgun law. This bill basically would allow used handguns to come into the state as well without having to go through the testing process. So for collectors and handgun enthusiasts, it's great. Um, and uh, that's, that's making its way through the Senate as well. We'll see where that goes. Um, but here again, that's, that's not something that uh, that's going to cost the state money. So it's, it's actually got a decent chance of, of making it. So we're watching that one as well. Um, SB 404, now, this is how crazy things are in Sacramento. You would think that this is a no-brainer. Basically what this is, this is an exemption for military veterans, members of the National Guard, and so forth, from the uh, uh, having the safe handgun test. In other words, when you go to buy a handgun, you don't have to go through the testing, you know, demonstration that you normally do. So this would be an exemption. The Democrats are actually fighting this one, so go figure. Anyway, it's in the, it's in the assembly, and we'll see where it goes. Um, but it just goes to show you how, how crazy it is for the gun um, The other one of interest to this group, and, and this will be the last one, is SB 616. This is another bill that's being carried by a Democrat, Senator Rod Wright. He's actually from South Central LA. Um, he's a Democrat who is very, very good on the Second Amendment because um, he kind of understands that his constituency needs some way to protect himself. And this is a CCW sequencing bill. In other words, there's a lot of counties, especially around here in LA, where you go and pay your fees before you're even, whether it's even determined whether you have good cause or not. So basically you wasted your money. What this basically does is it keeps everything in sequence so that you're not wasting your money and that before you go on to the next step, reasonable cause has to be proven first. So um, it's just a sequencing step that just makes things a lot easier. It doesn't, it's, uh, it, it just saves you money in the long run when you go through the CCW process. So that's a, that's a good one as well. Um, that's about it for the bill for the latest and greatest. Um, as you can see, I mean, with all these bills and everything, the only one that we're really worried about is AB 144. So. Um, we're doing we're doing pretty good uh, considering the uh, the climate up there, and um, and understand this that there's the problem in Sacramento is that the Democratic Party is pretty much controlled by a bunch of very left wing, very liberal Democrats from the Bay Area primarily and from around LA County as well. But you've got a lot of Democrats that are in the center of the state that are just very solid pro-Second Amendment guys. And if, they, if they were in any other state, they would be considered moderate Republicans. So um, a lot of this stuff that's going
good for our side, and a lot of the stuff that's not happening that's going to suspend file is because of the Democrats. So we've got a lot of very strong Democrats that are on our side, and uh, which is great for us. So AB 144 is a really big one. Um, other than that, that's, that's it on the, on the bills. Um, I'd like to open it up for a Q&A, but if you want to take a break while we eat, I can do that too, Pete. What do you think? Yeah, there's 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 a whole bunch of administrative processes that need to be that need to be addressed. So I I don't see the bill taking effect before January 1st of 2012. That's usually when bills take effect that have been passed in the legislature the year prior. So so if it gets passed, let's say by the end of this month, you still got almost six months to uh, you know to prepare for that, and we've got all kinds of lawsuits and stuff ready to go. So. So we'll take a break for dinner. Enjoy the enjoy your dinner, and uh, we'll pick up with Q and A. Gina, you good with that? You're great. Thank you. Okay.